beautifuls, this is Aram here, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2. We are back here with another route, and as you guys should know, or many of you would know, who we are going with. Oh, awesome! Alright then! Matthew's such a cutie, isn't he? I mean, not like he's a kid or anything. And yes, the majority of you chose Matthew. So anyway, we are I have with one last question for you. Some people like hearing the trigger warnings before they start games. No problem. It's my pleasure. All well, right. this game is recommended for players ages so it's gone 18 for and long up. Enough. Trigger I warnings include suicide, still talking, so. war, yeah. torture, mentions of rape, That's and a large amount of violence and sexual content. Okay, this has gone for long enough. I will not let them trap me in a corner like this. Azira! Hmm. Husband. You're still here. Why have you not left like the others? What do you want? Do you honor our marriage? I don't know. Did you honor our bond when you slept with that whore? Are they talking about Damien's mom? I said, do you honor our marriage? Uh, apparently she does not. <laughs> Cause I, wait, why is she even here? I do honor it, unlike you. Okay, so she does honor it. I'm guessing this is Damien's mom. She does honor his, her, their marriage for some reason. Then you still stand by our bond? <laughs> the way he says it's so funny. Why are you asking me these questions? Because he needs some reassurance. Because I need your energy. <laughs> or that. What? What do you? I'm giving you your physical form back. You should be thankful. Uh, I mean, he's giving her physical form back so he could just use her in the end. What? What are you? That's terrible. That's terrible. I could only stare at what was in front of me. I could hardly believe it was real, but there it was right before my eyes. How had my life even gotten to this point? As I gripped, my, gripped the pen in my hand, I let my mind settle into the situation. My fingers gently slid over the pen's surface, nervous and softly shaking. This was happening. Hey, is everything okay? Oh, Matthew's voice is so adorable. Is that why you guys want to hear his route? <laughs> or we'll see his route. I glanced up to see Matthew. Looking at me with worry, I could only shake my head and smile before finally signing my name on the paper in front of me. Oh, right. Okay. There we go. Look at my own name made me somewhat giddy, especially since it was next to Matthew's. So, what do you think? Matthew looked over and gently rotated the paper on the table to look at what I had written. Hmm. Thank you for coming to our wedding. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. It's just really cool to see our names together. That's so adorable. I felt a blush run across my cheeks. Was he thinking the same thing I was? Looking at our names together made me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. Looking at Matthew, he was grinning ear to ear, which made me do the same. His smile was practically infectious. Anyways, we are very happy you could all attend. It means so much to us that you support our step forward, and we hope you enjoy the reception. That sounds good, right? Yeah. Oh, alright. Yeah, that sounds good. Wedding preparations were nothing like I expected. I had organized parties before, but my own wedding had become a new foreign adventure for me to figure out with Matthew. Invitations, budgets, and a dress. Oh, well, the dress, not and the dress. The ceremony venue, the reception hall, it was all crazy. Still, I was glad to know that I was able to do this with Matthew. He seemed as excited at, about this as I was. There was something missing, however. Hey, Matthew. Huh? What is it? Do you think your mom would approve of this? The curiosity of the idea had been eating at me ever since he proposed to me. I knew he wasn't a fan of his father, but his mother was a different story. According to him, she had always been supportive of him right up until he left. Matthew rubbed his head, staring at the table and thought. Well, I don't know. I think she'd be surprised I'm marrying a human. <laughs> but I think she'd be okay with it in the end. She is my mother, after all. That sounds sad. 
Matthew only smiled and, I sh and shrugged. I thought she shrugged. I was going to be like, rude. <laughs> I knew it was a bit out of left field to ask, but I was curious. I wished his mother would be able would uh, could be able to attend the wedding, but I knew that would never be an option. Hello? Huh? My thoughts instantly derailed as I caught a ghostly whisper that seemed to reverberate in the air. I couldn't pin down the location, but I knew that I had heard something. Huh? What is it? You didn't hear that? Hear what? I looked at Matthew in surprise. He didn't hear the whisper. It had spoken his true name. I shook my head and rubbed my temples. Maybe I was just imagining things. Help me. That sounds horrifying. There I was again. I stood up from my seat and looked around, trying to figure out where that voice was coming from. Who's there? Whoa, whoa. What's wrong? I probably look like a crazy person right now. I looked at Matthew. How could he not hear it? I wasn't crazy. Um, s shake it off. Someone's saying her name. Matthew raised an eyebrow unsure of what I meant. Why didn't he get it? What was so hard to understand? But I don't hear anything. I know I'm not making sense, but someone keeps saying your real name. My real name? Zaketu? Yeah, Zaketu. Oh yeah. Yeah, she, kept, she keeps saying it and help me. Matthew slowly rose from his seat, looking down at the table in confusion and worry. I could tell he believed me, but wasn't sure how to respond. Are you sure you couldn't hear it? I'm sure. Hmm. Matthew looked up at me and walked around the table to stand next to me, and I turned my body to face him. He looked into my eyes and gently brought his hands to my cheeks. Does she sound like anyone we know? No. I stared as Matthew continued to look into my eyes. What was he looking for? Eventually, Matthew leaned in and placed a soft kiss on my forehead. What? I'll look into it, okay? For right now, don't worry about it and ignore it. It might be an illusion or something. This place is so full of magic, so it could be that. I could tell Matthew was worried. He wasn't making sense. However, I knew that we had a lot on our minds, so this was something that needed to wait. Maybe he was he just wanted me to not worry. Still, I couldn't help but be worried about it. Matthew gently released me and gave me off gave me one of his goofy smiles. Alright, well, I think that's enough work for today. Let's save the rest for tomorrow. Okay? Alright. I nodded. Today had been pretty stressful, so rest would definitely be good. Matthew led me back up to our room and get, got ready for bed. I, however, watched as Matthew absolutely ruffled his hair. Despite his kid-like demeanor, he was still a man and he was the one I was going to marry. What was even better about our love was that we both loved every part of each other. I couldn't stop gushing over his eyes, his fluffy hair, his kisses. He drove me crazy as he made me smile every single day I spent with him. It didn't help that he was also sexy underneath the baggy clothes he wore, because obviously, <laughs> no one no one was privileged privileged there we go enough to see him bare, and I was the lucky woman who woman given that permission. A simple ruffle of his hair was enough to catch my attention, and I stared at him. I really loved him. A small fire burned in my core, letting me know of my sexual attraction to him, but I wasn't sure whether or not to go with my gut or just sleep. Tease him, because why not? I did this in the demo. <laughs> Looking up and down his body, I really couldn't help but let my li li libido, 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 lib I'm pretty sure it's libido, I don't know words, take control. I let out a soft moan, loud enough for Matthew to hear. He froze, turning to look at me with a blush across his face. Imagine that, that's pretty creepy. It's just like a girl just like laying there, just randomly moans, don't know why. Uh, huh? Matthew. I was nervous, but I decided to tease him. I would have to go all the way. I slowly began. <laughs> this word. I don't. I feel like I would never stop giggling at this word because I'm very childish. Strip. I began. <laughs> I began to strip off my clothes, revealing my underwear and bra. Matthew's eyes darkened in a, into a lustful gaze as I gently ran my fingers over my stomach and between my breasts. I'm, I'm trying to keep a calm face. I'm trying, guys. We did a lot of work today, but I don't want to sleep just yet. I, I gently leaned forward and climbed onto the bed on my hands and knees, letting him enjoy the sight of my cleavage. Matthew turned to watch me slowly, not taking his eyes away from me as I crawled forward to, to his side of the bed. 
I licked my lips, happy to know that my teasing was working. I finally stopped moving forward and got up on my knees, leaning back a bit and stretching my arms behind my head. Why not make the night a bit better with me? I almost couldn't recognize my own voice. However, I went along with it. <laughs> oh my god. I, I can't. I can't handle this. He wasn't the only one in the relationship that could set a mood, even though he was the incubus. As Matthew stared, I felt a soft heat envelop my core and rush through my body, another moan coming out of my mouth. I looked into Matthew's eyes, seeing them glow loving but lust-filled gold. It slowly faded as the drama he cast on me ran through my body, making me hot. Hotter, not hot. I was, I'm already hot, apparently. Matthew's okay. Look at that, that grin. Just, just focus on the grin and nothing else. Matthew slowly began to sh strip off his jacket and, t -sh and shirt, not t-shirt, sorry, I was going to say t-shirt, letting me enjoy the show. Before he licked his lips, he knew exactly how to respond to my teasing, and despite it not being fair, he used his inhuman charms to make my mind melt at the sight of him. As he pulled his shirt off of his body, he held it out to the side, letting me get a good look at his chest. I felt myself lick my own lips at the sight. Then, let me make it better. Seductive as hell. <laughs> that was all he needed to say before coming over to me and crawling over my body, capturing my lips with his and a heated kiss. His arms wrapped around my waist and his other hand gently slid down behind my back and gingerly held my rear. I let my legs move out from underneath me so that he could kneel between them, gently grinding my knee against his. He smirked against my lips as he gave a playful slop. I was gonna say sloth. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> Grind with his hips against my core. My mind went crazy at his teasing foreplay. He pulled me against his body, squeezing me with his arm around my waist. Before deepening the kiss between us, I let a moan escape my throat and became lost in his mouth as he claimed my lips for his. I loved feeling him touch me and hold me to him. He was the man I loved, and I wanted to give him everything as he gave me, just as much and more. Our sex became just another way to express our desire and love for each other. Soon enough, we were both panting and moaning hotly as we made deep and passionate love. Our clothes were strewn around, strewn, strewn around the room, but our focus was in each other's eyes. His moans echoed mine as he kissed and nipped over my neck and shoulders. However, he always come back to stare into my eyes and kiss me deeply as he made love to me, as I made love to him. I loved him and wanted to be held by him and be full of him forever. My heart belonged to him and he was a dream come true to me. To feel his love for me was a blissful treasure I would cherish and experience for the rest of my life. That sounds like wedding vows right there. Bam. He always knew how to find me sweetest spots and knew the ways to make me buck and scream his name. We rose higher in our pleasure and ecstasy until we both ran over our limits and ever so gently floated back into the loving feeling of our embrace. Matthew could only pant and hold me in his arms, sweetly petting my hair and kissing over my forehead. I love you so much. I love you too. My heart fluttered at the sound of his voice, he was my everything, to, and to feel him in my arms made me happy beyond compare. I happily embraced the darkness of sleep as Matthew continued to hold me in his arms. The darkness was meant to be peaceful, sleep was meant to be relaxing, however, my mind began to wander to what had happened earlier that evening. Hearing that voice made me worried. Something was off, something was going on, and I was the only one who could sense it. Why though? I let the darkness seep into my mind a little longer, unaware of what to think of it. What the- <laughs> I opened my eyes and found myself no longer in my bed, but on a stone cold floor staring at a high marble ceiling. Despite feeling foreign textures beneath my skin, I vaguely knew where I was. I was in the main hall of the Demon Lord's castle. I remember the sight from the vision of the boys the boys gave me when Diana first appeared. Why was I here though? Where- <laughs> My instincts forced me to turn to the sound, and I saw someone I did not expect. Diana? Held in the air was Diana, hanging from four long lines of chains that were attached to her wrist and ankles. She was spread out, spread out like a star, and the chains were pulling her body in different directions, seemingly ready to rip her in half. My mind couldn't fathom why she was in this illusion, if this was one. She looked so different, but I could tell it was her. Why was she in chains, though? <laughs> Release me! Oh, I will. Oh. Hello? Matthew's voice reverberated with a cold demonic resonance. Resonance? Resonance? And it drew my eyes toward him in shock. There he was, sitting on the throne, practically lounging on it. He was in his human form, but his eyes were glowing an unnaturally gold color. 
What was even more odd was that he was smirking at Diana. I had never seen him smirk like that. Like he was enjoying seeing someone's pain. I'll kill you once I'm bored of this game. Your struggle is just so much fun to watch. You think this is funny, brat? <laughs> Matthew glared as the chains pulled harder on Diana's limbs. I flinched from the sound of her body stretching. Almost hearing the sound of bones cracking. Diana, however, sneered at Matthew in reply. Do you really think calling me a brat is going to help you? Nope. Well, that's what you are. A brat who abuses his toys until they break. I could only stare at the two, completely confu confused by what I was witnessing. I tried to speak out, but suddenly my voice disappeared before any sound could be formed in my throat. Gripping my neck, I looked down, trying to figure out why I couldn't speak. I hate dreams like that when you can't talk. There was some sort of vice pressed through my vocal cords, not allowing me to mutter at even a single sound. It, its weight made me almost choke. However, I looked back up as Matthew gave a sickly evil chuckle. That's right. I like to play with my toys until they're of no use to me. That's how toys work. Damn. Matthew sat up slowly from the throne and his lip curled into a devilish smile as his tongue ran along his upper lip. And when I'm done with them, I destroy them. And what of the human? Is she just another toy? I looked at Diana, seeing her move her head to look at me before turning back to Matthew in realization. I was physically there. I wasn't just watching the event, I was part of it. Matthew looked back at me and his face shifted to an innocent smile. My heart desperately clung to the possibility that he wasn't as evil as he was presenting himself to be. His smile pulled at my heartstrings, giving me hope that he was just playing some sick joke. She's not just a toy. My heart dropped to my chest. Matthew tilted his cu head cutely, giving me a disgusting feeling of adoration and fear from the sight. Never had I imagined feeling like this while looking at the one I loved, yet here, he wa here I was. She's my favorite toy. I can't break the toy that I have the most fun with. Especially when that toy gives me so much energy. Like a predator, Matthew began to walk towards me, passing underneath Diana's hanging form. I couldn't move as he knelt down and cupped his hand around my chin. I'll keep you with me forever and ever. Well, buddy, I'm sorry to break your heart, but I am a human and humans eventually, like, pass away, so I can't be here forever. Fear <laughs> seared my nerves. I did not want to be near this man. This wasn't Matthew. It couldn't be. There was no way. As he stood up, I felt tears run down my face. If this was a nightmare, I wanted to wake up. Please. Matthew's hand pointed at the throne and glided through the air back to me. The sounds of chains echoed through the room, forcing me to follow it and see a chain flying at me. I tried to scream as it leaped toward my throat. From thin air, a shackle collar formed around my neck, connecting to the chain as it reached me, and I was pulled forward roughly through the air before landing beside the throne with a painful thud. No! Diana screamed as a large cage suddenly formed around my body, making me its prisoner. I scrambled to my knees and gripped the bars around me, now frightened beyond compare. Matthew let out a terrifying laugh, sending more waves of fright through my body. This wasn't happening. This world is mine. No one can stand in my way anymore. Not James, not the Demon Lord, and not you, Diana. Smirking wildly, Matthew looked at Diana, raising his arm across his body. And I've grown tired. Of you. Before Matthew could move, my fear and anger quickly bubbled in my chest, one word pushing past the blockage in my throat. Stop! As my voice ripped through the air, everything went black. My body, however, sat up in bed in shock from what I had seen. My scream reverberated through the room as I let it, let it sink in that I was awake and all of that had just been a nightmare. Despite it all feeling real, I was no longer in a cage. I was in a room with Diana being ripped apart. I wasn't... <laughs> What? I shot my head to the side to see Matthew in bed with me, sitting up beside me and rubbing his head. A heavy tiredness weighed down the eyelids over his frightened eyes, but my mind suddenly began to seize in fear just from looking at him. My mind shouted that it just had been a nightmare, but my body couldn't help but remember what Matthew had done to me in that dream. It may have been fake, but I couldn't stop the fright from washing over my nerves. Tears formed in my eyes and I stared, as I stared at Matthew. I wanted to know that everything was fine, but I was really... But 
Like what? That I really was more than just a toy for him, but my voice wouldn't let me speak without bawling. Matthew quickly rubbed his eyes and stared at me, his concern obviously deepening at seeing me in tears. He slowly raised his hands to embrace me, but I flinched away, causing him to freeze in place. And this is where we're gonna stop. You know what, since there's so many swats anyway, I might as well just plop it right there. But that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you Matthew fans are excited for Matthew's route. I'm kind of excited for his route, just because he's like appearing as a cute young brother. Or Is he the youngest? The youngest, right? I forgot. I'm horrible. But either way, he's like the, the childlike representative of out of all the boys. So... I mean, I'm, I'm excited for his route because I'm pretty childish myself. <laughs> and I would like to see how this route goes. Maybe it's like super cute and hopefully more with him. That was the only complaint I had with Damien that I was just seeing other couples and not really me and Damien. Which made me upset in a way. But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll catch you guys soon.